You did quite well there. We did well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I started BX Property in 2014. Um, I'd come out of a 25 year career in IT marketing um, and decided that I wanted to make my living through property. Started really without understanding exactly what my strategy would be, um, but managed to stumble across uh, lots of different strategies in property, um, so decided that that was, that was the way forward. We uh, started um, developments with John actually as our client. Um, we did a couple of schemes in Southampton uh, and decided to invest with John in this development at Didcot. This site came along because of a relationship that I'd already made with a local estate agent called Brecon and & Brecon and they came across this as, as an opportunity. Um, the building was owned by an, another local developer who typically works on uh, new build houses. So they owned this site, but they didn't really want to build it out themselves. So discreetly, they spoke to the local agent um, and made it available. The original permitted development was for 14 flats, and we were able to increase that to 17. Um, so the total mix has gone from 19 flats overall on the scheme to a total of 22. Permitted development rights have been very important um, for my business but I didn't really understand them before I started. So my first project was um, a house refurb. Um, so I was looking to try and convert it into flats, um, but in the end we couldn't get planning for it. The difference between ground up to refurbishment is you have a lot more issues to resolve in a refurbishment project generally because you're dealing with an existing structure uh, with all the fundamental um, design problems that come with that on opening up and changing the building from what this one is as an office building into a residential scheme. Your new builds tend to be a little bit easier because you're coming out of the ground, everything's new um, and simpler construction really. This is the first time that I will have done anything that requires a different mindset. All of my projects to date have been built to sell. So with an element of this project being built to rent, We've had to just look at things like very basic stuff like the schedule of finishes. Yeah, probably the most basic example is do, do you want carpet in the bedroom if you're going to be renting these? If you expect that every year you may change your tenant, yeah, so it's a transient business with renting. So you know, do you want to have to clean the carpet every time that somebody changes? Yeah, would it be better just to, um, just to have a solid wood flooring or a solid laminate flooring and then if somebody wants to put a rug in in the bedroom they can do. It's really the maintenance and longevity of the products really yeah. that we yeah. look at. Um, we want things that we can easily uh, maintain, repair if they get damaged, if, if there's an issue with them. So it's looking at those types of finishes in a uh, rental project rather than a project we're going to sell. Yeah, the signature or ethos of a John Lynch development is really about affordability. So one of the benefits of permitted development has been that we've been able to um, introduce the concept of um, smaller, more affordable homes or apartments. So the main ethos is, is to really position ourselves at the entry level of the market. And with the support of the government's Help to Buy initiative, we've been able to um, provide an option for people who are either living at home and want to move, move out and buy their own place or are currently spending a lot of money on rent. The most important thing that we do when we look at a scheme um, is to see its location, um, not just its wider location, um, but also specifically how close it is to amenity. It ticks many, many boxes in terms of transport location. Um, we've got Didcot Parkway train station um, within about 0.8 of a mile away. So, you know, so for those people who want to, you know, want to visit into London, it's pretty. It's a fast train route, so it's very good. Also, local amenity in terms of shopping is very, very strong. So we're about 200 metres from the Orchard Centre, which is a large um, development in Didcot that's that's been ongoing for the last few years. So there's a lot of regeneration happening within the town. So we're right on the doorstep of, of that newly regenerated area. Also, the land itself, um, it provides parking for each one of the flats. What makes a good joint venture? I think the main thing is um, having a, a very clear joint vision. 
Um, so from day one, it's been important for Andy and I to agree exactly what our objective is with this site. Um, we both have our own distinct goals in terms of investment, you know, the returns that we're looking for, um, you know, what we want to sell, what we're happy to keep our money in. I think it's really important on day one to be totally transparent about that. And the second thing that's important to a joint venture is, is communication. So making sure that you know, whilst you have a common goal, that you keep speaking you know, as you go through to make sure that anything that changes in terms of your original expectations, that you're communicating with each other about that. Already we've said to each other, we didn't realise just how much was required on each other's side of the fence. I think he's always seen me turn up to, <laughs> to monthly meetings um, for, as a client and thinking, oh, this job's easy. But, if you're, uh, but I think you're starting to see some of the things that we do in, de in development yes, in yeah, terms yeah, of sure. um, raising funds, um, you know, setting the specification, working with the agent, local agents to make sure we have the right um, product for development, um, you know, setting the schedule of finishes, trying to maximise the, the specification and, and make it as high quality as we can within the confines of, of, um, you know, of the cost model that we have. And all the legal side of the it. Legal side, um, yeah. Everything, yeah, it's been a real sort of eye-opener for me coming from the construction side to the development side. Um, we would normally turn up on site with a specification, a tender, um, but between myself and John, we've obviously developed that together um, and looked at a practical approach, which I suppose from the construction side, we can bring to a scheme. Um, and John is obviously more in touch with the sales side and everything else. So it's a really good combination. I think it works really well.